Acting is not about feeling. If it were, it would be called, we're doing feelings here. Acting means actions. And my job here is to have you turn everything you're fighting for and its opposite into an action. Also, actors have a great struggle between uh, this is saying what I'm doing and, and, and I should be saying. And I say to them, no, just give up all idea of sanity and accept that you're insane or you wouldn't be in this business. And then you'd be much happier. When I found out I was insane and totally accepted it, then I have no problem. But if you keep striving for sanity when you're not going to find any in this business, there isn't any then you're just going to have make more problems for yourself. So accept that you are insane and go on and just become more insane. Humor is not jokes. Humor is not jokes. Humor is not jokes. The great performers of comedy, uh, uh, Laurel and Hardy, Charlie Chaplin, Lenny Bruce, Robin Williams when he's really on, um, who? Evan Stella, <coughs> the Three Stooges, uh, who? No. <laughs> Buster Keaton, yes, absolutely. Jack, Keaton. Jack Benny, yes. You got to remember that comedy is based on pain, and we laugh because we're so relieved that we're not in their position. It allows us to to suffer vicariously without going through the pain, so we laugh. Now, who do we laugh at? If some old stumble bun is walking down the street and slips on a banana peel, or a banker all dressed up in his best spats and everything, and he, which one do we laugh at? Because of the incongruity of that happening to him. Whereas the other guy falls down all day long, so he's not, it's not funny. <laughs> laugh at yourself for being so ridiculous and out of hand and hysterical and ridiculous and absurd. And then you'll go in another direction. But you've got to go too far, you won't find any humor. People don't find humor right sitting on the fence in the middle of the road. It's only from extremities that humor comes. Can you run into the problem of though getting too extreme in, e in every single direction and just sort of looking like you're just far too intense and it gets to be a bit no. predictable as well? No, 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 no. Who are the actors you admire most? I don't know. Don't ask me that question, because I won't be able to think. I can't think. All right, I'll Don't do it. <laughs> Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, Robert Duvall, uh, Jack Nicholson, all extremists, all go to the furthest, most possible lengths. Marlon Brando, who could be more extreme? No, it is not possible to go too far if you have opposites that go that same distance in the other direction. There is no such thing as overacting because of opposites. There's only overacting when there's no relationship. You can't leave me. Oh, no, you see, you see? That is just the sort of thing my mother would say. You didn't hear what I said. You said I can't leave you? 
But I'm going to. Why? <laughs> I'm going to run away with your sister. <laughs> We're going to commit incest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My little sister? No. You can't prefer her to me. No, 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 you wouldn't think so, but I can. You're just trying to drive me crazy. <laughs> That's it, Mill. I'm trying to drive you crazy. Am I getting close to doing it? Yeah. I'm gonna have a fucking nervous breakdown. <laughs> right here, right fucking now. Well, I'll bet, I'll bet, I'll bet that I won't be able to tell the difference from your normal everyday activity, Mill. Oh, yeah? What a fucking bet. Sherry. And I found a lot of things I wanted to laugh at. I felt um, just the opposite. I thought every time she said, are you going to tell me? Are you going to tell me? I thought, well, there, there's the commitment. There's the, this has to work. That this, you know, and then you can't leave me. You, you know, it's so ludicrous. Like, you'll never be able to leave me. You know, like, uh, for me, I just, and then the humor, like, it was throughout the whole thing. I, I don't know where it was lasting. It, there was nowhere else you could put it. It was just packed full. I don't know where else you could have let it be. Just, mm -hmm. Can you tell I like you? <laughs> <laughs> Who else? Chris. Um, well, one thing that I think I was missing a bit was, and that was from, um, from Catherine, was the building anger once she found out you were really starting to go. Like, I, I felt that. Because she didn't believe you initially, and it's like, it's just another attempt or whatever. And then there wasn't really any anger that just started with the realization that, that yeah, that you were serious, that this was over. So Why does there have to be anger? Well, it doesn't have, well, sure there has to be. No, there doesn't. There never has to be anger. It's a concept actors must get rid of. Anger is not a necessity. Well, yeah, Hurt is. Okay. And I felt she was hurt. Okay. Mm -hmm. But she didn't have to express it in That's anger. True. You can express hurt in any number of ways. She expressed hurt through revenge, okay. which is how I express hurt. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm highly sympathetic to her choice. <laughs> Actors are either searching for one of two things, not all, but uh, there's always a group of actors, searching for the big A or the big V. The big A is I've got to learn how to be angry. My contention is you can have a whole career and never get angry once if you don't want to. Anger is an expression of having been hurt. There are lots of ways to express hurt. Pout, deny. What are the other ways of expressing hurt? Huh? Doing nothing is a really bad choice. No. No actor doing nothing is ever going to be interesting. I mean, not giving the other person what they want, which is communication from you. Acknowledging. No, 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 no. Withdrawal will not work. Confrontation with, I'm not going to give you what you want, will work. The other, the big V, is those people who say, I am too tough, I must learn how to be vulnerable. <laughs> so people are either working on how to be angry or how to be vulnerable. Now, both of those are absolute folly pursuits. Forget them. What is vulnerability? Being open. Being, being open enough to be hurt and to express the fact that I have been hurt, you have hurt me not keep it a secret. Most vulnerable people keep it a secret, which is why their vulnerability stands them no good stead in acting. And when you come asking me to come begging back to you, I'm gonna call the cops and have your ass locked up. You emanate reasonableness, you know that? You... A an excellent plan, an excellent plan. You infuriate me. 
Just for that, I'm late. You think I can't get along without you? You are sadly mistaken. And just remember, late at night when you're sitting here all alone and the phone's not ringing, that'll be me! Chris? I was thinking of, um, if there was a point, Alex, where, where, the, where a dangerous element could have come in, and I was, uh, I was thinking, because you covered so many things, and maybe that wasn't necessary because you had so many other tactics. There was one point when she had the bat up here, and she was just holding it, and you were very much aware of it, which I liked, you know? And I, I don't know, I maybe would have liked to have seen you take the bat yeah. to show that other element and then try to outwit her like you were doing. But I thought the scene was wonderful. Oh, we did that once in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Rehearsal. Yeah. She just kept coming after me, so I just, just went after her. But uh, then it turned into a whole different scene. Yeah, she's pretty tough. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, you're right, you're right. And it, uh, it sort of, my instinct was to do it. I was just waiting for her to, to come one more time, and it was sort of like I had had enough. And we went into a whole different thing. But no, you're right, you're right. Sherry, have you ever seen Greater Extremes? About Totally Believable, right? Oh, yeah, especially when she hit the thing sitting on the, yeah. uh, the boot yeah. across her. That's something but I But everything here. they did was extreme. Yeah. Even the quieter things were done in extreme. It, everything wasn't aggressive at all. And it was, so I found it, and I'm very familiar with this piece, whereas you are not. Um, that it was totally unpredictable t for me. And I was having a ball. <laughs> Never knew what they were going to do next. <laughs> and so I thought it was wonderfully imaginative. You wrote this, choice. did you? Yes. I, did, I, I wasn't aware of that. Wonderful. We keep secrets from you as best we can. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you a question. What's the worst thing you can say about another human being? <coughs> hmm? They're boring. And why are they boring? They don't have sense of Because they have no sense of humor. The worst thing we say about somebody that has no sense of humor, I mean, that's the death knell. It means avoid like the plague, right? So fortunately, and one of the reasons I love actors is most actors have a sense of humor hidden away somewhere ready to be dragged out if necessary. And most of you, it isn't really hard to drag it out of you if you just get confidence in using it. Eugene O'Neill, Chekhov. No matter how serious the playwright, you must have humor. One of the best productions I ever saw of a Eugene O'Neill was when Glenda Jackson brought her London company in Strange Interlude to New York, and they played it so wittily that I was laughing hysterically half the way through. Because, you know, he writes so melodramatically, and it, it is so, the dialogue is so ghastly. The dialogue is, is Eugene O'Neill lifted out of, there's a power in the relationships that overwhelm this incredibly unspeakable dialogue. and. But with humor in the relationship and the sense of the absurdity of it, instead of suffering, 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 which is what people love to do with Chekhov and O'Neill. I don't mean there shouldn't be a lot of suffering, but when you suffer a lot, if you don't laugh at yourself, out the nearest skyscraper window. Opposites, opposites, opposites. Let me put it this way. Well, I already gave you the example of the opposite of the guy who wants to get married, who packs his bag to run away the night before. Every single thing you're fighting for has an opposite to it. The easiest way to find the opposite is to write down what you're fighting for and then write down the negative opposite of that. Then turn the negative opposite into a positive action. Yes. The best way to find, the simplest way to find out what the opposite is, is to write down what you're fighting for, then write down the opposite, like, 
I am not fighting for so and so and so. The, when you hear a negative in the opposite, it won't work. So you have to turn it into a positive action. Uh, you spoke earlier about some of our favorite actors have using huge extremes in their acting. And they can get away with those huge extremes if they use also huge opposites. But And humor. And humor. But often they might use a huge extreme, but their opposite might be very subtle also. Could it no, not? The opposite must be equally strong in commitment to what you're fighting for. It does not have to be equal in quantity, but it must be equal in quality. Can't be just a little thing. When you say subtle, you mean a little tiny thing. No, no. Now, on film, you can get away with much more subtle things than you can on the stage. But get used to strong, expressed opposites that are the equal in strength to what you're fighting for. They don't have to occur as often, but they must be as strong as, or otherwise they're not going to be a threat to what we're fighting for. And they have to be a real, genuine, destructive threat to what we are fighting for. And it's that conflict that makes us fight harder for what we're fighting for. Because we have to keep overcoming this destructive side of us, the side of us that doubts, the side of us that says, I can't do it, the side of us that says, I'm got good enough, the side of it that says, they're going to take somebody else, the side of it that has all those things that we destroy ourselves with all the time. And we have to keep overcoming those with, with such a strong desire for what we're fighting for that that is what we're determined to win with. Example, my dear friend over here went to a, an audition yesterday, drove 27,000 miles to Montreal and 27,000 miles back. She told me some of the virtues of her audition. Then she went into a, a, a litany of why she wasn't going to get the job. I didn't do this, I didn't do that, they don't want this, they don't want that, I'm not pretty enough, my, 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 I, I, my face is crooked on the camera, et cetera, et cetera, they probably want an American. It's in us, all of us. We have to keep fighting the devil of destruction that's in us all the time. Now, the reason Chekhov's plays are called comedies is not because they are Neil Simon, yak, 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 it's because he is pointing out constantly the absurdity of human beings with their opposites, constantly destroying what they're fighting for. The people in Chekhov have these dreams and they destroy them. They have these dreams and they destroy them. They let anybody else destroy them. And that's why he says they're comedies. Their comedy is about the, the, the ridiculousness of the human situation. <sighs> more and more and more and more. I think it's not a question of new form or old form, but rather that we should write without any form. Write because what we have to say flows freely from our soul. Free. Who's that? Someone ran down the stairs. I can't see anything. Who's there? Nina, Nina, it's you. It's you. I knew somehow you'd come. I could feel it all day. My soul has been in torment. I couldn't keep still. Someone's here. There's no one here. Lock the door. Someone may come in. No one will come in. Irina is here. I know. Lock the door. The door doesn't lock. I'll put a chair in front of it. One problem and uh, some questions. What were you fighting for? What, the main thing is she's at the big crossroads in her life. Who? I'm at the big crossroads in my life. And I've got to make some really big decisions. And I think I've come back to, to have him save me initially. Yeah. And I start off, I think, 
with the decision that I'm going to go in there and clean it up, up everything so I have a clean slate and start again. The minute I see his face, it's like, fuck, what am I doing? You know, what, which way do I go? Tell me, do I go forward, no, do I go backward? No, not that soon. Not that soon? No. What was needed was for you to throw each other in each other's arms. You took, you looked at each other and I thought, oh, Christ. The reason you come back is to be saved. Why will he save you? Because I know that he will always love me. Okay. So do you not come here seeking to try to love him because he loves you? Yeah. Okay. That needed to be stronger expressed in the scene. And, I, and surely the opening should be the two of you throwing each other into each other's arms. You've been dying to see each other for years. You've been walking up and down for days. He's been waiting for years. And then you just stand there and look at each other? We, we were doing it that way. Well, why not? Well, because we wanted to do the opposite. Don't start with the opposite. The opposite is the negative. The opposite is our destructive side. You don't want to start with destruction. You want to start with construction. Because after you got into the scene, you were wonderful. Your whole life you've been waiting for her to come into this room. And you care. You care, you care, you care, you care, you care, you care. And. Otherwise, why would you shoot yourself at the end if you didn't care? Mm -hmm. It isn't futility over your writing. No. It's the loss of her, and therefore you will never write. Okay. Clear? Mm -hmm. it, yep. We start a scene going in to fight for what we need, not what we don't need, but what we need, what we want, what we can't live without. Then the opposite comes in when somebody hurts us and does not give us what they need, so then we hurt them back. Now it makes sense. Click. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. You will find that the answer to most questions of should I do this or should I do that, the answer is both, because that creates opposites. Do both. Why just do one when you have two to do? If you have three ideas, do three. Why do one? People keep fussing over, should I do this or do that? Do both. Sure you can. You don't do them all at once, you do them at all. Oh, very important thing about opposites. <coughs> Never play your opposites together. It, think of it as colors. A stroke of red, a stroke of green. Very vivid colors. A stroke of yellow, a stroke of blue. Very vivid colors. Mix them together, gray. In life, when we say to people, I don't know what you mean, it's because the person has been playing his opposites together. I don't know what you want, it's because the person is playing his opposites together. We do this a lot in life, which is why communication is so difficult. For acting, we must learn to separate opposites. They can be played immediately upon one another. There should be no transitions ever in the acting in this class. Transitions are for rehearsal purposes. They are how you learn to get from point A to point B. When you perform, you cover up your tracks, let the audience figure out how you get from A to B. And if they never figure it out, fine. You just go from A to B, because in life, People go from one thing to another, and we think, how did you get there? What the hell did that happen for? That's life conduct. We don't do transitions in life. Why would we do them in acting? It's just a, uh, a rehearsal technique. So don't play your opposites together. But the more immediate the opposites are to each other, the more unpredictable the performance is. <laughs> Discoveries are of two kinds. Discovering something new about your partner or about yourself, or getting confirmation of what you suspected was true. And you discover, ah, it's true. I have to tell a, 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 a brief story here. Do you want the story or not? <laughs> <laughs> it 
If it's what? Free. 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 I have two friends who are very rich, and, uh, and they invite me to Sunday brunch. Anyway, so I'm with them one morning, and all of a sudden, he pushes his grapefruit aside, and he said, I don't want this grapefruit. And she says, Sam, what the fuck is the matter with you? And he says, I don't like grapefruit. She said, for 17 years, we've had grapefruit every Sunday morning. You've eaten the grapefruit. He said, for 17 years, I've been trying to adjust to you, and I'm sick of it. <laughs> I am not going to eat another single grapefruit on a Sunday morning. She said, you are too. Eat that grapefruit. He said, don't order me around. And he picked up the grapefruit and threw it smash down on the, on the parquet floor. And he got up and stormed out. And she said, what am I going to do? And I said, I wouldn't serve him grapefruit if I were you. <laughs> so if a couple who have been married for 17 years can discover that he doesn't like grapefruit. There is no scene in your whole life in which you cannot make discoveries. Hey, how come I haven't seen you here before? You come here all the time? No. I stop in. I look around. I watch, listen, and then I go. It's the first time I've been out of the house. In how long? A year, over a year. You've been in the house all that time, all by yourself? No. With my dogs and cats. <laughs> Roseanne? What I was surprised of in the first scene, that's the first time you meet in the woods, were the discoveries. The first time you meet someone, there, were, there, were, there was a lot of things that, that didn't make sense, that, or the discovery about each other, or the discovery that Maybe this is an interesting person that I want to get to know or that I want to have a relationship with. I felt it was all very casual. Um, and I think what you could have added were the discoveries and higher stakes in the, in the, in the first scene. I, I have to disagree with Roseanne because I loved the first scene. That was my favorite part. I, I saw you really working for high stakes and the, and the casualness didn't detract from it at all. And it was a great game of tennis. Uh, there are two things that I think. One is, um, I do think a lot more discoveries could have been made. Um, it isn't as if they weren't aware of the discoveries. It's they weren't expressed as discoveries. Particularly the astonishment that we have when we discover something about somebody new. So I felt particularly in Nancy that that was missing in the first section or two. I have actors come and say, I auditioned for that show twice. What do you ask me in for again for? I said, it's a third chance for a job, you idiot. <laughs> come, maybe this time we want you. Uh, if they call you in 17 times, maybe, do you start thinking, maybe I'm just missing one little element or they wouldn't keep looking? Do you, do you start oh. looking around for that element or do you keep doing what you're doing? Now, you keep on doing what you're doing, but you always keep adding, adding new elements of your life to it, new discoveries to it, new opposites. You don't change it, you add to it. You don't throw away, you add to it. So it just gets better and better and better. So one strong thing that I've learned is that we are, we're going to be in all kinds of situations and we found ourselves in situations here that are embarrassing, stretching us to the limit and we're taking high risks and to do that you always have to uh, trust your own self and leave here no matter what anyone says. You have to make your own mind up about your assessment of your work and um, because otherwise we'd go mad.